all right so good morning uh, this video solution is for the topic of thermal conductivity and it is from resting and any as you can see the question has mention of four walls layers okay and each layer has different thermal conductivity different thickness i will tell you the basic concept as to how to solve these problems and understand the situation if you notice the energy transfer has been given to be steady okay what does th this mean what it means is let me explain you with the help of a diagram so if you have multiple layers okay so if you have multiple layers layer number 1 layer number 2 as you can see in the wall it is same concept the rate at which the heat enters okay and the rate at which heat leaves okay which means when i say rate i mean you know maybe joules per second which could be you know watts for example okay so at every interface it is q the rate is constant this is the meaning of the word uh, you know the energy transfer through the wall is steady and note that these walls are one after another okay so they are what is called as a series situation like if if you've studied the chapter of uh, current parallel and series you would have realized that you have to this is one after another the heat is coming in and leaving so this place is called as interface the this is your interface okay this is an interface the temperature here is also constant and you know what is the value of q q is given by k a temperature difference uh, which which is for example if this is your t2 so t2 sorry if this is your t1 so this will be higher temperature to lower temperature divided by the length this is the way you write this q okay and then you can write q for if you have written q for this you can q write the q for this structure this interface also right so start writing q for all the interfaces this is the way you need to solve because q is a common uh, theme which connects all the layers so let me write q for the second layer for example q will be given by k a let's say the temperature here is t3 and here it was t2 so t2 minus t3 an area of cross section of each layer is same so the area we are referring to here is same okay these are of same area so t divided by l and then of course you can this if this is your t3 this is your t4 you can write one more which is k a t3 minus t4 divided by l okay now you understand right that the concept is the what we have used in in this question is that the energy transfer is steady and this is what it means that the rate at which the heat is getting transferred through each interface remains unchanged this is a series situation okay so we call this a series situation if this was a parallel situation what you will have is this you will have structure number 1 and a structure number 2 and when the heat comes in from here q the heat will get the rate at which the heat comes in gets split so the rate here becomes q1 and the rate becomes q2 here and again they get added and the rate becomes q and in these you have to apply q is equal to q1 plus q2 right the rate of heat flow gets split so these are known as parallel so first thing you have to notice in any question is if the interfaces are adjacent to each other and you know they are not on top of one another so this is the situation of top of one another whereas this situation which is our question of resnick and helliday the layers are adjacent to each other if you get this situation what you have to use is this concept okay write equations at each of the layers and then we will solve the problem so let me just all right so 
let me just rub this off uh, so that I can create space. But in the meanwhile, let me tell you, when the rate of heat transfer is steady, what you're saying is that there is no heat generation. So no heat gets captured inside the wall. The rate at which it comes in is the rate at which it leaves. So there is no heat generation. Nothing is captured inside the wall or stays inside the wall, irrespective of the interface. If two joules are entering per second, two joules are leaving. So there is nothing called as held up, you know, heat inside the wall. All right. All right. Now let's start writing equations for each of the layers. And that is what will give you exact clarity as to how to apply the maths of this. In this question, if you read carefully, you have a lot of unknowns also. And that is to create confusion in your mind uh, you know, and, you know, confuse you as to how to approach this. The approach is very straightforward. The step number one, always in these questions, pick up each layer, layer number one, two, three, four, five, also as many, you know, Q is constant. Start writing the Q, which is a rate at which heat is getting conducted through that layer of the wall or whatever is given to you one by one so i'm writing this for layer number one now and you don't have to really you know worry just just keep on writing them just take care that you have some unknowns also in the question and then you of course you need to find out the t34 so i'm writing the standard algebraic expression for rate of heat transfer uh, which is in series which is your k temperature gradient multiply by area right so k so that is what i'm writing straightforward right for layer number one and you can see the temperatures have been give, given at the layer number one itself you know the temperature of t1 is known to you the temperature of t12 is known to you so you know what is the temperature gradient available 30 minus 25 so without you know worrying just straight away write this use si units 0.15 converted to meters don't worry about you're not knowing A because finally it will get cancelled. Go to this, you know, think about what other layer you would like to attack now. Do you want to attack the layer number two? Do you want to attack layer number three? Do you want to attack layer number four? So it's your choice, you know, which you find to be condu conducive or easy. That's a call you need to take to solve uh, these questions. And the way I'm going to solve this, I because the unknown is in layer number four. So I have chosen that I'm going to write the equation for layer number four. So let's write it for layer number four. And we know T34 is unknown, but T4 is known. T4 is given to be minus 10 degrees. So that should not be a problem. Uh, and we also know the K for layer number four. We also know the length of the layer number four. So I find it, uh, you know, uh, the strategy of writing the Q expression for layer number four to be most attractive to solve this problem because at least I have included the unknown quantity in the question, right? And so what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the... So this choice of which layer to attack is something you need to think about and then, you know, decide uh, uh, as to which layer makes more sense. And uh, sometimes you have to write all the, uh, you know, Qs for all the layers. So I'm writing this for layer number four because I have uh, an unknown in the question. The question itself is fine T34. So th this gets included. It may be insightful. I don't know if it will help or not. But step number one, obviously for beginners is, uh, is to write Q for all the layers. Don't hold yourself back, right? Uh, layers, uh, you know, Q for all the layers because sometimes you just don't need to find one temperature as is the case with this question. Sometimes you need to... All right, so let me write the same uh, rate of heat equation for layer number two. So the equation is going to be same. There is no difference in the formula. If you notice K, K2, okay, let's, let's see where is the K. You have K4 available. K2 is unknown. So K2 into let me write the temperature gradient of the second layer it is t12 minus t23 multiply by a divided by l2 right so this is l2 
Now let me write the same. Now if you notice, you know, layer number two is pretty bothersome because if you notice K2 is not known and L2 is not known. So I'm not sure if this is going to be of much value or use. Too many unknowns in this. Let's write this for layer number three. The layer number three is still better than layer number two because let's see K3 is known, right? So K3 is known. 0 0.04 into the gradient which is t23 minus t34 into a divided by the length which is l3 right so now we've written all of them right and as a beginner i told you you have to write all of them and then as a next step you have to make choices. You have to decide which layer, two layers you will pick up, which you find may give you an answer. So if you notice the layer number one, which we had written earlier, had everything known inside it. So if you just write for layer number one, I'm just going to write it as layer number one. So this was third layer. This was the second layer. If you notice the layer number one, you know, and K1 is, is straightforward, 0 0.06, and then T12. So if you notice T12, known. So, and this is also known. So 30 minus 25, 30 minus 25 divided by the length. The length is also known. So this is very conducive, right? This is very useful because a lot of stuff is known in this. So 1.5, for the timing, I'm just keeping it centimeter because I know it cancelled into area if you notice the last layer which i had written in the last right that also is is good because it has one unknown and rest is known so if i write this the k4 was known to me right the k4 is 0 0.12 so 0 0.12 and i can write this as t34 which is unknown minus t4 which is 10 degrees so it will become plus 10 degrees minus into a and what is the the width L4, right? It is 3.5, right? If you equate the layer number one with layer number four, you will find that areas will cancel. The only unknown in the question is going to be T34. So the layer number one and layer number four actually give you the answer, okay? If once you find T34, for example, if you find T34, put it here. You know, you can substitute the value of T34 here. Okay, if you put the value of T34 in this particular point, what you can probably think of is that the T23 is also known to you, right? T23, if you notice, right? No, T23 is not known to you, this particular temperature, T23. You will be able to find T23 from layer number 3. If you know T23, because you know, right, T34 is known, this is known. What you can do, equate T23 with layer number 1 itself, right? Sorry, layer number 2, where you have two unknowns. And then, you know, so on and so forth. So you can have multiple ways to solve a problem and find many unknowns using these. Here, the focus was only to find T34, so you you can you you were able to successfully find T34 using this and this first and fourth layer. So as a beginner, my recommendation is write down all the equations and then make good choices and include one of the choice which has an unknown and the other one which has a lot of known values. Now, second one was pretty pathetic because so many unknowns are there, right? And serves no purpose actually practically, right? The, the only way to find second layer is first to use, uh, you know, Q1 is equal to Q2. And in the second, use Q2 is equal to Q3, right? Because you have two unknowns, you will still be able to find uh, the two unknowns if you use these. And I've told you how to work backwards to find a value of T23. So I hope this question made sense. Always remember that the the key words to be noticed are study study you know and this is what will give you the biggest hint and then it's all writing all the equations once you mature once you start understanding what's happening 
you can write the two best equations and straight away hit the bullseye. So I hope this was useful. And just for your knowledge, I'm very happy to inform all of you that Tevan has also joined this channel. A lot of students from Tevan are watching this channel. And I thank you, Tevan. Now please do subscribe and spread this channel across Tevan so that you know people can benefit from it. And thank you all, all other countries. India and United States are at the top. And then you have Turkey, you have Bangladesh, you have uh, many other countries. The, the ones which are catching up are Canada, uh, which are, and Hong Kong. You know, and Hong Kong and Canada are also coming up in terms of the viewership. So thank you very much. Uh, the, the number of hours I'm seeing, you know, as far as the growth of the channel goes is incredible, which is, which is I think, the first success I have. You know, I've started doing this recently on more, you know, uh, consistent basis and more, uh, you know, professional manner. Let me put it this way. Earlier, I used to do something just out of my, you know, out of the blue. But now I'm just more focused and trying to explain you. This is the only channel known for explanation. So keep watching this and thank you very much for your time.